Welcome back. So now that we have our different um, methods here that are not implemented, we need to start implementing those methods. Now, before we do that, I want to kind of, since we are now working with an internal uh, thing right here, I'm going to make this guy private, meaning that people from the outside cannot access our list directly. There we go. And then I'll make this an underscore because in the .NET language, when we have a private variable, we normally make an underscore for it. Now, this pretty much means that now I've encapsulated the list of customers or my database of customers inside the customer repository so nobody can get it unless they go through my um, different functions right here. Sweet. So now we have that available. Now, how do we create a customer? Well, if we go back to the program and we have a look at how we actually create a program, a customer here, there's one called add customer right here. The way we do it is pretty much just say add the customer, right? Because here we have a list, so that's very simple. And then we add a new customer and just add the three properties we have available right now. And then we add an ID to the guy. Now it's a bit different in the new version we have right here because I want to be able to add a customer, but I don't want people from the outside to set the ID because I have to be in control of that. So deciding what the ID should be, that's something for me to decide in here. Okay, so when I create a customer, I expect that the guy who sends in the customer to me, he's actually going to have either no ID or something that I can override. So I'm going to say the customer's ID is going to be the new ID right here, and then I'm just going to add to that ID, right? So now I have added so that the ID is one plus whatever customer I'm at right now in my system. Sweet! The next thing I want to do is kind of just say, the customer needs to be added to my list. So I can just add the customer right here, customers.add, and then I'll add the customer. There we go, now we've added the customer. And the last thing I do is just return the customer. Again, just to kind of uphold the contract from the repository, the customer repository, the interface, right? I have to return a customer in the end. There we go, so now that should be added and returned. Happy days! Sweet, so that was a create function. How do we return a list of all the customers that we have available? Pretty easy, we'll just do a return statement right here and say we want to return the customers list. So now you have all the customers available that you can use that, them for something, right? How do we get a specific customer? Again, if I jump back and forth between the program, there should be one on how to read a single customer somewhere. There we go, find customer by ID, something like this. We run over the list of customers and look for a specific one. Let's just grab that one. Just for now, we're just going to do something as simple as that and say, somebody's passing in an ID right here. I'm going to run over my list of customers. And if I find the customer and he matches the ID, I'm going to return that customer. If not, I'm going to return null, right? Pretty much the same idea as we did in the UI. To update a customer, now this is a bit more tricky because I'm actually going to remove this from repository later. So let me just add a note here so you guys know that it's going to be removed later. Remove later when we use unit of work. Oh yeah, when that pops up, we're going to remove this guy from the repository. I'll explain that later. But for now, we need to be able to update a customer. How do we do that in the program? So let's jump back to this file right here. Do we have an edit? Yeah, we do. So we first found the customer that we want to edit and then we can just set the information on that customer. We can do the same thing right here. So let's just copy this guy over. Say we wanna, in the repository, read the customer. So let's just make a local variable right here, customer from db equal, notice the b, oh, man, I need a new b key. I can say this read, right, read by id, and then I can pass in the customer to updates id. Right, and then hopefully, let me just give you guys some more space here so you can see what I'm actually typing. There we go. So now that we have the customer, we can just do a null check if customer from DB is actually there, not null, then let's do something. But if he isn't, then we'll just uh, return right here, null. We didn't update the customer. That's kind of the way that I wanna explain that we didn't find him. If that's not equal null, there we go. So now we kind of have a customer from the database and now we just want to update all the information. So we'll say customer from database dot first name equals the customer that we are sending in from the outside, first name, etc. right? Let's just do that. There we go. Now we have all the different properties we want to update. Whoops, it's only a single equal sign. And when we're done, we'll just return the actual customer we just updated. There we go. So now that should pretty much be the same idea that we had inside 
the program, right? We get the customer from the database or from our customers list, we update the customer and then we return them when we're done, right? So now we, we have the, the returned customer and we get null if we somehow couldn't find the customer we could pop up saying customer not found, I don't know. Sweet, the last one is the delete one. And again, let's jump back to the program and see how we handle that in the program. De -de -de delete customer, we find him and then remove him from the customer list. We can use this again, so let's just try and do the same thing in our implementation in the repository. There we go. Find the customer by ID, so that's not quite the thing we're doing here. We say read by ID instead, put in the ID that we want to read. If the customer is found, then we take him and remove him from the list that we have locally. There we go. And now we've removed him. And then in our case, we want to kind of return um, null if we didn't find the customer or we return the customer that we just deleted. I know this might be overkill, but that's really up to you how you want to do it. So now we kind of made an implementation of the same information that we had in our program. But now when we're done next lesson, we're going to remove the domain logic, the service that kind of takes care of storing the data. We're going to remove that from the UI or the program into the domain service layer or inside the core combined with the infrastructure. Okay, so that's going to be the next lesson. So see you next time where we'll try and get rid of all domain specific or infrastructure specific information in here. Have fun.